This is the cat of the place I'm staying at. Okay. Anyway, today I went to the recycling center and I picked up this old television. They actually saved it for me. Paid 20 bucks for it and it works. It's a Toshiba color from 1984. Ah, you're on the poison oak. Let's test it out, see if it survived the trip. Yes. Look at that. Hmm, no sound. Well now, the blinds that were here, I was going to open them up to allow some more light, and they all fell down. <laughs> the landlord said he'll get some more. I mean, he's... I think he's making it, t taking it a little too importantly than what I... Because he said he'll try to get some in an hour, but it's like, well, you don't have to get them in an hour. It's, you can just... I mean, I wouldn't mind buying curtains to put up here anyway. But yeah, this is my room after a week of being here. I've organized it quite a bit new stuff to talk about and some more new stuff that you've already seen in this, vid in this video so we have video and we don't have audio that's a lot better than the other way around though because if we had audio and no video mm, fixing the video is a lot harder than fixing the audio probably also whenever we feed a signal into here the image is really staticky it has a lot of snow on it so it probably has like a power supply issue or something anyway and then I pick this up okay for first off a friend of mine tried to do a modification on his Atari 2600 to have uh, to, to give it the RCA jacks, but he can't get video signal anymore. Turns out it's a bad solder trace. So we can go through how this mod works, how you can do it for like 20 cents instead of him paying the 20 bucks for it, and we can fix the trace and play some Atari games in another video. Then at Weird Stuff Warehouse, I found this. They're selling these tubs for four bucks a piece. Of course, they're all just random, random tubs, so I, don't, I didn't see that they had another one like this, but they had other ones that were like slightly bigger, slightly smaller. But still, $4 for that? That's a, that is an awesome tub. At Halted, I found this. It's some more 8-inch floppy disks. Look at that. New in the packaging from the 1970s. Hewlett Packard. Then I got this Betamax case at Where's the Warehouse? I actually hid it for two months. Because I thought about getting it, but I didn't feel like paying for it at the time. So I just, I hid it underneath one of the shelves. Still there, so I got it. It was a dollar. Then I picked up another Seagate Elite 23 hard drive. This is just for the spindles. So we can remove the spacers on one spindle and add all these spindles onto the other one. Or platters, I mean. So that we can make the other gyroscope I made heavier. And so it works better. Picked up some video cables and stuff like that. Some Ramun. Or Dam... Uh, Ramun soda. It's Japanese. It's pineapple. This is like the old, what's it called, codneck bottles where you have the marble in there and you push the marble in. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And finally, well, actually, no, not finally. Second to finally. I just remember another thing. We have this. It's from 1930. It's basically a power meter. Like for instance, you can pull it out, and inside is basically just an AC current meter. Or a kilowatt hour meter. That's awesome. It goes up to 100 amps. And finally, the last bit of stuff is this. A new helmet for my tricycle. Because I keep hitting my head on branches in the bicycle lane. So I got that. It was 30 bucks from Amazon. At first, I really hated it because it had like these like pads inside here that crushed my head. Also, the insides aren't even glued in. But I took those pads out, and now it fits fine. I like it. It also does help reduce the wind noise a little bit. You know, I'm not really sure where to start this weekend. See, that will be its own video, that will be its own video, that will be its own video. And 
it's not like I'm gonna open up those discs right now because I'm not gonna open up open them up unless I'm gonna actually use them. But in the meantime, it's nice to keep them in the original packaging. You know what I mean? So I think maybe we should open up the television and see what's happening. Or actually, you know what? Let's see what it's doing right now. Let's hook up a few units that I have because I have like a little digital to analog converter box and stuff like that. So, so now, how do you go from coaxial cable to this? Simple. You cut the cable in half, and, get, and you get the shield and the inner wire out, and you just hook them up. So there we go. And this can go into there. But now I need 12 volt coming in here, so I grab the little connector off my IMAX B6, and we'll connect that up. Oh, look at that. Well, look at that. I added this dinky little antenna, and I get video. What the fuck? This, this, really? Just that little antenna? I'm used to Illinois, where I'm at least 60 miles from any television station, where I'm kind of obsessed with getting more channels. I don't give a shit about the TV that's on terrestrial TV, but I love making antennas trying to get more channels. And I ended up with having like this big, like 60 pound antenna hoisted on top of a, like a 40 foot pole that I would like mess with. And I got, I think 20 channels one, one time. That was crazy. But, wow. Now that I'm in the Bay Area and they probably have antenna, antennas on all the mountains around here, we can just like, get channels anywhere. Wow. But yeah, you can you can see what I mean by it's a little bit grainy on there. It's not too bad though. Let's go to scan and auto scan and see how many we get. So it found 13 channels. Wow. This converter box sucks though. Sucks pretty bad. Because it doesn't actually give you a full menu of, of your channels. You just gotta flip through and see them. Well, that's not too bad. I have to get old shows. So now the only issue is I've only tried it with that shitty di digital to analog converter. So maybe the snow is just from that. Let's grab the other box. This will convert from RCA to coaxial cable. So we can undo this. Well, let's try Legacy of the Wizard. I've never seen this game before, so... There we go, that's a little better. Hmm. The video doesn't look all that bad on here, actually. It's a slight amount of grain, but not enough to have to bother fixing. I don't think, at least. Hmm. So now that we know that the video works fine, let's start taking it apart. Well, that's interesting. This little cover pops off, and you can access that. I think it's probably a grounding pin, so you can ground it. That's not good. It's popped in like that. Hmm. Looks like there should be only two more screws. You see, this is what I love about TVs this old, is because they're easily repairable. These are discrete components that all have a, a, a specific single use. Okay, so now I have this little jumper, which is a little too thin for my liking, but oh well, it'll still work. Connected up to the ground on the CRT, which I believe that's the ground. Yeah, that's the ground. And... I'll put it underneath here to discharge the tube. We'll hear a loud spark. There we go. Then with this clip, I say we just pull this back. And clip the alligator clip onto there. There we go.
So now there is no way for that to build up a charge as long as these two are connected. And you know what? That's another thing that I love about old stuff like this is everything's detailed out on the board of what it does. Like for instance, power, AFC, chroma, horizontal and vertical, video, sound. So the entire sound board area is this little section right here. So I can mostly focus on that, and if nothing's wrong in there, then we can see where that goes back to, like the these bits or whatever. Hmm. That's weird. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. I tested the voltage on it, and that's what made it... Come back, that's weird. I have no idea what I did, but oh well. Maybe I had to discharge the capacity between there, so I don't know. But either way, it's working now. I say if it's working, forget about it then. Televisions are always so weird how, like even the simplest thing, and the weirdest thing can, can fix them, like hitting them. My television back at home, eh, about every hour or so, this picture will just go away. But if you even like, like, like that on the side, or usually it's on this side, if you just tap it a little bit, the picture will come back. It's so weird. You wouldn't think that would work, but there's just so many things going on in here that one thing can break. It's so weird. Oh, well, let's get this thing back together. Actually, you know what? It'd probably be good to go ahead and clean all the dust out from inside of here first. And I can also make sure I get that down into the right place whenever we put it back together. It looks like this thing has been taken apart and put back together in the wrong way. So maybe that wasn't an impact. Maybe that was just someone pushing it too hard. Because also, there's this one little RF shield inside of the television that's missing its cover. That little RF shield right there, it should have a cover on. And that is in the RF like demodulation section or whatever. So I'm thinking maybe that's the source of all the static and snow on the screen is because somebody took this apart, someone took that off, forgot to put it back on, and so now we're getting so much interference in there, and that's messing up the image. So if I take a piece of metal and put it over that, that should work. To make that RF shield, I could cut up this metal can of acetone because there's not much left in there. But I think I'm going to go with this. This is a video that, or at least the subject of a video, or the result of a video that I've since lost original footage for, so let's finish it now. Back in, I think March or April, back, it was the same day I got my metal detector and I made that video, which I've lost that video, so we can redo that sometime. I melted down a bunch of styrofoam using that acetone, <laughs> that kind of works out, and I let it sit for a couple months in this can. And check this out. It's polystyrene. It hardened into that. Isn't that awesome? If I had a vacuum chamber, I could have made it dry a lot quicker and it probably wouldn't have so many big bubbles in it. But yeah, that's hard polystyrene there. But anyway, I'll cut out a section of that. That should be thin enough. And it should also work as a good RF shield. Okay, so I'm going to connect this on. Check that out. Hell yeah. I just want to make sure that that doesn't like fall off and short something out because that could that could spell the death for the TV really. But anyway, back to this. Whoops. That hasn't been much water. Ah oh, well. Oh, look at all that grime coming out. None of this thing smelled like it was burning whenever it was on. Now, I don't mean it would smell like burning like actual fire. It smelled like old electronics with junk on it.
You know, actually, I think this is the plastic decomposing, so I'd have to get like a nice little brush to rub this off, but some of it does come off. The top, the top looks kind of okay, though, so that's good. Okay, so now with this, I believe I can just leave some of that dust in there, but... Because I really would need like a, an air compressor to blow all that out. The motherboard goes into a slot on both frames, so you make sure it's in the slot. It's not quite in all the way, so I'm going to pull this out. Try to train the plastic to come back out again, you know what I mean? Try to train it to be level, or whatever. There we go. First we test out just the television. And yeah, looks fine. Nice. You know, judging by how that picture looks, I think it is just that little shitty digital to analog converter box. Because it looks fine on this. My camera is almost picking up this perfectly. That's kind of why I like getting this high speed camera, this Casio EXCR 1100. Because, for some reason, the high-speed chip can pick up... I mean, because it's a, it's a high-frame rate image chip, so it can pick up this TV really well for some reason. You know what I mean? That's so weird. If, if, if I try to record this TV with any other camera, usually it's just all messed up. So I'm quite happy with that. That was definitely worth $20. Because it just... it fits so well, in my opinion. And I'm pretty glad that I was able to fix it a little bit. Or actually... yeah, yeah, I was, totally, I was able to totally fix it. I keep forgetting that the main issue is that stupid little digital video converter wherever it went. I have much better vi digital video converters at home that I'll probably bring out here because they just have better interfaces where you can like get a nice menus and you can get like good graphs and or good visualizations of how much signal you're getting and whatever. This one just is shit. So I'll replace that. And I plan to replace this with my VCR because, well, now that I have this, I can finally fix my VCR. Remember that project I like, started right when I got here? I got that VCR like the first week I got here and I didn't have a TV yet so I couldn't do anything with it. But now it should work. And I might see about getting myself or making myself a nice little TV stand to hold the VCR and the N Nintendo and all the game consoles and stuff like that. That'd be pretty nice. Oh, also my landlord got the blinds. So that's pretty nice of him. He's, he said that I, he said that he could install them if 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 I wanted him to, but I feel kind of bad for having him do all this stuff. So I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna like put it up and stuff like that. I figure if I make this room really nice, it'll make a good impression. And if I and if I keep take care of the room or whatever. Also, I'm I'm gonna see about replacing the chair, because so, this was kind of stolen from the kitchen. I'll put, I'll put that back in the kitchen. And I go to like uh, Goodwill or something like that and get a nice little 1970s leather chair or whatever that's on wheels because that'd be nice. And then I might keep an eye out for a desk because he said that he stole this desk because it used to be his old, his old like TV stand. So I can give that back to him and he can use that in the living room or whatever. And I could have a nice desk with drawers or whatever if I ever find one. So if I ever find that stuff, I'll keep an eye out. So guys, I just got back from Target and I got some power strips, of course, so now I can have plenty of power connections. And I can hook together my TV and Nintendo and stuff like that. 
and have it ready, ready to use. Now the big question though is where to put it. I could seriously redesign the room, but I think one interesting thing would be just to turn the bed, or you know, get a different bed, like get a futon that can fold out, so more room just to have stuff in here. But turn it, so then this, the bed ends about right here, and then have the TV on, on just one of the rubber made containers right here, so it's facing the bed. That'd be kind of interesting. I don't know. I always like having the TV on like a little island in the middle of the of the room, so you can get to all the cables in the back, but also you can walk behind it. I don't know. It just seems like it's like, then like a secret area behind it. I also picked up some chips and some pizzas. I tend to alternate between Totino's, DiGiorno, and Red Baron, especially these little mini bites. When I get these mini deep dish ones, though, I always get mozzarella sticks. So I mean, I know I'm. I feel kind of bad because I'm spending a bunch of money. It's like, it's like three dollars per box. I mean, that's three dollars. It's like, well, this is two meals though. So but still, so it's like three dollars a meal. I can I can get this down to like one dollar a meal if I get a coupon. But oh well. Sometimes it feels nice just to spend the extra two dollars because also I don't have to scrape off the pan of the oven or whatever because these the Totino's they stick really bad Anyway, I always cook four of these and four cheese sticks Approximately a nine count. I have yet to find one with nine in it. They're always eight So approximately that yeah, that's just bullshit So I always get four little deep dish things and four little cheese sticks and that's always nice I'm eating so fancy food. I love it. I think I'll cook one of these though. Stuffed crust. And look at that. It's all nice and cooked. Now I've never opened one of these before. So it may make a mess. Not counting this has been in the back of my tricycle. So probably all the carbonation has come out and made it under pressure. That is so cool. Oh, and it's still carbonated too. I love that. It tastes very pineapple-y. Well guys, I'm gonna just play some Nintendo and have some fun. This is gonna be a pretty good Saturday. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!